Good evening everybody and welcome back to the channel. So uh, we are at my home shop and uh, we are going to be making some pins for the gray doll. Um, I want to start using it here pretty soon again uh, and I need to make these uh, pins. These are the boom lift pins. These are actually what pin the cylinders to the actual cradle that holds the boom to raise the boom up and down. So um, I had this pin originally, came with a great all, and it wasn't greasable. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to be making this pin greasable this evening. I got this pin done. Um, I started out with an inch and a half uh, red top hitch pin, cut it down. I had to true the end of it up a little bit to get it to turn true in the lathe. And then I drilled three inches, well actually three and an eighth deep into it and I put a grease passage and then I come out here and I went ahead and I mas machined a grease passage there also so that the grease can get around the eye of the cylinder. So uh, the only thing I got left to do to this is I need to weld a head on it like this pin has. So uh, I done this one last night and I thought you know what I better do a video on doing this. Now I'm not a machinist by trade. I know enough to get me by to make things happen and be able to make simple projects. Uh, it's it's something that I'm learning. I'm kind of self-taught at this point. So uh, I bought some uh, some cheap drill bits off of Amazon. They're right here. They're this uh, Nikio brand N E I K O. Um, I don't really care for them that much because they there's a lot of twists in them since they're long drill bits, and I needed a long drill bit to get to the center of that pin. So uh, I stopped at Smith's Farm Store on the way home from work tonight, and I picked up all the sizes of the black oxidized Milwaukee long drill bits. Uh, the nice guy there at uh, Smith's kind of looked at me like I was crazy when I said I want one of each size, but uh, I want to have them on hand. So I got eighth all the way up to half inch. So I will have these on hand now when I decide to make pins with grease passages. So got the bits. Got the Machinist Black Book. This thing is a savior if you're uh, starting to learn how to do machine work. I mean, this thing's got all kinds of information in it. It's a, it's a great book to have. Found it on Amazon. Really enjoy looking through it. Tells you different tooling and stuff like that. So, uh, great to have on hand. So, uh, let's get started. Now, I do have this in the lathe, and it is trued up. It just looks like it's off center because the head's not quite straight on it so it kind of looks like it flops but it really don't so first thing I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to cut a grease passage so the grease can get all the way around the cylinder eye and keep it lubricated so let's get started and another thing I want to try is I finally got internet back at my house so I'll be able to upload videos here at home instead of having to go and sit in a grocery store parking lot like a creeper and upload videos or try to upload at mom and dad's before I come home every night. Some of these videos take like three to four hours to upload. So hopefully with having the internet in the house again, I can set them to upload while I'm sleeping and they'll be there for the next morning. So uh, let's get started. Well, let's get this groove cut here. Now it's not going to be super big, just going to freehand it. That's all I need, just a little bit of uh, area for grease to get around. So now we'll start drilling our hole through the end. 
So I got that face cleaned up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start uh, drilling a, uh, a center hole. I'm going to start with just one of these bits. That way it's not so long and floppy. Now to give the long bit a good start. Just a little lube here. Okay, there we go. Got us centered, now we can start drilling with our long, long drill bit. Okay, we'll see how these uh, Milwaukee bits do. This is 3 16 Get her put in there. Get her tightened up. Dad Strength's grandpa always said to tighten every hole on the chuck. Yeah, we'll see if Grandpa Niner was right. He was a uh, machinist by trade. Perfect. Go ahead and tighten this up. Now we'll move this drill bit by uh, cranking this right here. That'll shove it out. Or it'll shove it forward. And we'll begin to drill. Get some lube on there. Forward, and away we go. Oh, that's drilling nice already. I'll tell you, that's that's a better drill bit than that other one. Oh man, drilling that like butter. Now, like I said, I am not a machinist by trade. I know enough to get myself in trouble. I'm sure probably somebody's saying, well, that ain't how you do that. But it worked on the other pin. We'll get this hole drilled in. We gotta go, we're gonna go three and an eighth. And then we'll take it over to the mill and we'll drill down through that groove right there. It'll correspond with this hole. We'll drill all the way through. We'll bring it back over. Well, actually, I'm going to tap it while it's still in the lathe. I'm going to go ahead and just tap the threads. So we'll do that before we drill the hole. Kind of want to do everything while it's set up in the lathe so you're not taking it in and out. Should move this camera over here so we can get a little better view. Sorry, new tripod. I'm learning how to use it. I'm going to keep plenty of oil on there. Now I'm using uh, Viper's Venom. It's a, a superior high sulfur cutting oil. Got it from Grizzly. My mill and my lathe are grizzly. The uh, lathe is a uh, G0602Z if you're wondering. And the mill I'm going to be using is a, uh, where's the number on that? Oh, it's a G0704 is the mill that I have. Now they're not super big, you know, they're considered hobby size, but they're enough to do things like this. going really good. Clean that bit out a little bit. Now 
much better bits than them other ones. Milwaukee bits are really good bits. Okay, so I'm finished drilling this and we'll uh, get some video of the next step. So we're down to our, our last little bit that we need to drill. You can see the line on the shank of the drill bit. That's where I'm going to. So we're just about there. It's Milwaukee bits ripping through this pin. It's only taken me about 15 minutes to drill this. Uh, when I was using those other bits, I think I had probably a good hour in that pin. So for those of you who are not familiar with the project Great All, the Great All is uh, from the 1960s. I got it from my buddy Mort, the same guy that I'm getting the John Deere 690B excavator from. Uh, he had the Great All, used it quite a bit on the farm, and then uh, parked it in a fence row and uh, kind of left it for a while. And then I come along, he's like, hey, would you be interested in that Great All, something to play with? I said, sure. So we went and got it non-running, drug it up on the trailer and brought it home. And I've been playing with it ever since. It's been, it's been kind of a work in progress. Pretty fun project, cool machine. There wasn't very many great alls of that time period that were on tracks. It has an Inslee uh, crane undercarriage under it, all air operated as far as the clutches and brakes and stuff. Pretty cool machine. Go check out the older videos on it. Um, definitely was a fun project getting it up and running. Okay, so we are at our uh, depth that we need. So now uh, we can go ahead and pull this drill bit out. We need to step this hole up a little more. And then uh, we can tap it. And we can take it to the mill. We can mill this hole. And then we'll go weld the head on the other pin. And uh, I'll show you a completed pin. So before we uh, go ahead and put some threads in, we're going to have to drill this hole big enough that we can put some threads in it. I'm going to go ahead and slide that up there, get my wrench, tighten this up. Because that was not a large enough hole in order to get threads in, but uh, due to sizes of drill bits, that's what it had to be. So we'll get us some lube on our drill bit here. That'll be plenty. get uh, my tapping tool and uh, get that set up put some threads in there well we'll start tapping now so I've got my spring-loaded tapping tool these things are great if you ever wondered what the hole was for in your t-handle for your uh, taps this actually fits in there and you put this in here and I'll show you how it works for those of you who are not familiar this definitely helps you get um, your uh, tap started straight. I always have a little bit of a struggle to get my tap started straight. Bump this up to it, just like so. We'll tighten that up there. Now that's putting spring pressure on your tapping tool. All you gotta do, start turning it, and it helps you get everything straight. It also works in a mill. So if you want to tap a hole in a something that you got in your mill, works great for that too. Get a little more oil on there. There's a quite a bit in that hole to begin with. Oh, I gotta chase it a little bit.
quarter by 28 is uh, grease circ uh, threads, if you're wondering. There we go. Back this off. Slide tail stock out of the way. We don't need it anymore. There we go. Now we'll go to the mill and uh, we'll get our rest of our grease passage done. And then this pin will be done. We're over at the mill now. We're going to go ahead and uh, get the bit lined up. I'm going to bolt this mill to the floor in my new shop. I'm going to bolt it to the floor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit. Just going to drop the mill down, line it up with the hole. Just like so, just kind of eyeball it a little bit. Right there. Now, we'll just slide the, uh, oops, kick the camera, sorry. We'll bring it back over. Need to find me a bigger mill. A nice bridge port would be nice. Need a bigger shop first. Right there's where we're gonna drill our hole. Get a little lube here. And drill us a hole. Well, we got our holes drilled the way we need them. So I took some brake cleaner. I went ahead and I sprayed out any uh, chips or anything that could possibly be in there. So now we're just going to go ahead and uh, put our grease circ in. And uh, we're good to go. Should be good. Pin's ready to go back on the grade all. So let's go uh, weld the head on the other one real quick and it'll be ready to go. We're gonna get this uh, end tacked on here. It's just a heavy washer. That's all it's gonna take to uh, keep this pin in. Um, you might hear a crop duster fly over once in a while. I'll have to uh, yell at my buddy uh, Eric Howard over at Bluebird Ag. He's interrupting my uh, my uh, videos here. It's all the crop duster noise. So if you need crop dusting done, get a hold of Eric Howard at Bluebird Ag. Real super nice guy, good friend of mine. Hey, right, so we'll get this welded up here and we'll be done. Okay, go ahead and grab my helmet and weld that up real quick. Got my helmet on, and now I can weld it up real fast. There we go, that'll work good. That's all we need to keep it in the hole. So I'll clean that up a little bit. Might even change that grease circ out now that I've got it a little warm. I don't think I got it too warm though. So uh, I think we're good. Okay, so those pins are done. They're ready to go back on the grade all. That's one project out of the way. 
So uh, another project that I started on and I've been kind of working on this off and on. Um, this is the project that we got the little four horse diesel engine for. So this is the project I'm working on here. I'm taking a old snow blower on tracks and I'm going to make it so I can stand on it and drive it around. Uh, this is what I'm going to drive around during plow day out in the field so I can get video because uh, I've done a lot of walking around on plow day in the soft ground and after a while I get tired of walking so I thought you know what I got this idea for this little personal carrier that I can make. So I got the four horse diesel motor for it. I've got the centrifugal clutch CVT clutch for it and I was going to use a transmission with reverse but I don't think that's necessary. And in order to get all this the way I want it on here, I'm going to have to uh, delete the transmission, which is okay because the CVT clutch will make up for that. So uh, I had an old Honda rear engine rider lawnmower laying around, and that's when I started with this framework here. Uh, this was part of the Honda lawnmower. So uh, we'll do videos on this as I progress on it. But uh, I'm just trying to rough everything together right now over there on the welding table. There's actually a 90 degree gearbox that's going to go under here so that uh, the engine can sit straight on here. When it's all said and done, I think I'm going to make sheet metal to make it look like my little John Deere MC crawler. So uh, this will be a project that we're working on. It's going to be pretty fun. Um, it's not going to get done anytime soon, but I'm starting on it and I'll uh, make some videos along the way. So uh, anyways, thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it, and we will see you all in the next one. Don't mind my dirty shop. I need to get it cleaned up. I uh, brought my little 110 John Deere lawnmower in here, garden tractor, and I had to uh, change a belt on the deck and got busy doing other stuff after I did that and kind of left the mess on the floor. Um, I kind of bounce around from thing to thing. I still got the reel to finish up for the... Uh, uh, Alice Chalmers all crop 66 combine still working on that got all the pieces cut out just need to bolt it all together and get the old stuff tore apart and get it painted so lots of projects yet to do I will get to them uh, got plenty of time yet so fall's not even here yet so we got plenty of time to get the combine back together because I would like to cut some beans with it so uh, anyways plenty of content coming so hopefully you enjoy it. I uh, hope that uh, my viewers stay with me. Um, you never know what's going to happen every day. So like today, we actually had to go fix a water line in a cow lot. I didn't video it because I didn't have the mounts to put in the excavator. So uh, I didn't get that video. But every day is a new adventure around here. So anyways, thanks for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one.